Last night was uh, a busy night. You know, before I come up, I try to spend time just getting ready. But last night, it was just a very busy night. Um, I was just telling somebody that uh, we had a trauma come in and a guy, he had a gunshot wound to his neck. And it went through the neck and the bullet was like still in the other side of his neck. And so it was just very messy. And so I was just very busy, you know. I just take it away from my time. Yeah, he, he survived. He survived. San Jose is rough. <laughs> um, so praise God. It's been a while since I rapped. Um, I was just praying to God, help me not to forget my lyrics. Um... You know, I realize like how important your memory is when you're when you're rapping, man. Like I was watching uh, my wife and uh, Josh Omada. It's like to rap several songs like one after another. Like that's a lot of just memory. You know, I was praying just to remember my few lines. Oh, <laughs> uh, you know, your memory is a is a talent. You know, I, I've. Um, just in my life, I never really had a good memory when I was younger, and I believe God is helping my memory, you know, um, as I spend time with God and as we serve God, I believe that the anointing and the presence of God helps you to, like, function in areas, you know, where you, where you have weaknesses, you know, but um, just in general, just, you know, just living life and not having a good memory. Um, just a couple thoughts. Have anybody ever like forgot like a girl's name? I'm the only one here who forgot a girl's name. Look, <laughs> APC. Um, I was just, I was just reflecting on this time where I was like, and this is back when I used to be like kind of a chaser, kind of a girl chaser. I went through a period of life where I was just, I actually fell more in love with the chase than, than the women. It was just fun to just chase, right? So I was coming home late and it was like, you know, two o'clock in the morning or something like that. And I said, ah, you know, I'm stopped by my friend's house, just random. And I realized when I was getting close that I couldn't think of her name. <laughs> I, like, I, I completely forgot her name. But I was bold back then, so I was like, I'm going anyway. <laughs> and I was just like, I was like, I was thinking, you know, it don't matter. It's 2 o'clock in the morning. She'll come to the door. It won't matter. Right? And she didn't come to the door. And um, I think it was her cousin or somebody comes to the door. Yeah, it was bad. And she answers the door, she's like, she's like, hey, you know, hello, right? And I was like, yeah, can you, uh, could you tell her Jeremiah's here? And she was like, tell who? <laughs> and I was like, yeah, you know, tell her, Jeremiah's here. <laughs> and she was like, who, it's seven people here. And I was like, ah, uh, and she realized I didn't know her name, and she was like, ooh! She was like, you don't even know her name! <laughs> this is a very true story. And I, try, I was trying to be cool. You know, I was trying to just keep my composure and act like I had it. But she started screaming, right? Like, it's 2 o'clock in the morning. It's dark. You know, she, her voice was like reflecting off the houses in the street. So at some point, I just backed away and ran to my car. Like, <laughs> so, I never visit that girl again. Yeah. <sighs> Praise God, you know. People with a good memory. I see people with good memory. And, you know, they, to them, it's just like they think everybody has a good memory, right? Jovan makes fun of me. You know, you guys remember the short guy, uh, Jovan? Jovan is like photographic memory. He remember everything. And he always come to me like, Jay, you remember you said 
such such to me on this day at this time, you know, about this specific thing. And I'll be looking at him like, I have no idea what you're talking about. I remember it was uh, another time I was out with some friends. And um, I was talking to some girl. And um, I had started talking to her and got into the conversation. I got around to asking for a phone number. And she, she, was, she played this trick on me. She was like, it wasn't really a trick. I don't know why women play games, right? But she was like, she was like, yeah. She said, if you can tell me my name, I will give you my phone number. And I was like, what? And I didn't even realize that she told me her name. And I was just doing so much talking that I wasn't really paying attention. But she realized that I wasn't paying attention. Now I looked back at my boys, and they was like dying laughing. And I was like, oh, right? So I was like, free Yoda. <laughs> just making up. And at some point, I just, I just walked away. <laughs> Praise God. So nowadays, you know, that's why now when I do stuff and, and my memory is there, I, you know, I'm grateful to God. You know, I, I, I know God is helping me function. You know what I'm saying? So, praise God. Um, I think God has also been helping me um, just getting delivered. Um, I was, actually I woke up uh, in a dream like two days ago. And in a dream, it was like, some kind of thick mud like you know how mud gets hard when it's on something and it takes the shape of whatever it is and it's like cracked and like and it was like a whole bunch of this was like coming out of my mouth right and in a dream I was thinking logically and I remember thinking I need to go to the dentist I remember my you know waking up like oh my god I need to go to the dentist right and then I realized like oh you know it's just a dream right and I was thinking oh wow you know God must be getting out some stuff, right? And, you know, as I'm still, like, I'm still doing a lot of work. I'm still just wax on, wax off, right? And God told me at Revival that he was going to be, you know, delivering me from stuff, right? And you don't really think about it. You just, you just do your job. You just do what you do, right? So as I'm, as I'm doing this, and this is not the first dream I had like this, right? I had a, another dream also, like, a couple months ago where I was uh, asleep and whatever this was that was being pulled out of my mouth was like some big metal something and it was like bigger than my mouth right and I don't know uh, uh, I couldn't see who was pulling it out I just in a dream I just remember being like <clears throat> and it was like this big old thing was like being pulled out of my mouth right and of course, you wake up afraid, like, what in the world, right? And then it just hit me later, right, that God is still, you know, Pastor always talked about how we're getting cleansed, right? And how important it is to be cleansed, right? So, you know, as you do your work, right? And for me, like, God is working on me as I work in the yard and, and do other responsibilities. So as you clean the bathroom and as you work in the kitchen and as you Whatever your godly assignments, as you're faithful to that, you know, it's a very real thing that God is delivering you and, and helping you. You know what I'm saying? And a lot of times, um, as you're waiting on God, that's, that's what you're waiting for. You know, we need to be cleansed to a certain level because um, we don't want to try to have, you know, God pouring out the spirit and we have all of this filth in us. Amen. So, I know you're looking at the scripture on the, on the board. One day, Abraham said to his oldest servant, the man in charge of my household, take an oath by putting your hand under my thigh. Um, I don't really have revelation on this scripture. I just thought it was funny. Um, you never been reading the Bible and you find yourself laughing at something? I just was imagining 
some grown man putting his hand under another man's thigh. And I was like, I know the Bible is timeless, but I was like, that's an old, that's an old one right there. Like, could you imagine you go to a church and you get called into an office and somebody's like, we have an important assignment for you, an important mission. But first, I need you to come here and put your hand under my thigh. <laughs> could you imagine? <laughs> Be like, uh, is this San Francisco church? <laughs> I, I think I got a pass on this mission. Uh, next. <laughs> so, yeah, I just found myself, I was just laughing. I was just reading the Bible all by myself, and I was just laughing at the scripture. Just imagine how crazy that would be if, if that happened today, right? Like, Praise God. I know y'all thought it was going to be some deep revelation, right? I know Elder Sam was like, man, he about to go deep on this one up. <laughs> no, I was just, uh, <laughs> I just thought it was funny. I mean, you got to think, back then they were wearing skirts. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? They not wearing jeans. He not touching jeans. He up... You know what I'm saying? <laughs> anyway. <laughs> I used to know a guy at Kaiser. He would jog in a kilt. That's the thing. Guys, he used to be a doctor um, that would jog in a skirt. He'd be like, you're wearing a skirt. He'd be like, it's a kilt. He'd be like, whatever, that's a skirt. You look funny. Oh. <laughs> I can't say that. <laughs> they just texted me another translation that's uh, it's not really appropriate. So I'm not even gonna... um, can we get uh, Genesis 2 and 8? And it says, and the Lord God planted a garden eastward in Eden, and there he put the man whom he had formed. So, you know, just as a precursor, I want to talk about, you know, um, there's, there's several jobs that are, that are talked about in the Bible, right? And the, the jobs have significance, right? So we know that God took David, David from um, being a shepherd of the sheep, right, to being a shepherd of his his people, right? And we also know that God took uh, the disciples from being fishermen to being fishers of men, right? And people get excited about those jobs, right? People want to be the shepherd, right? The shepherd's like the pastor or the leader. People want to be the fisher of men because it's like evangelists, right? Go out and do powerful things, amen? But I want to talk a little bit about the job that God gave man first, right? Before he gave them these other jobs, right? He put, took Adam, and this is right after he formed him, right? So this is the first man, and this is the first job that he gave to man, right? And he put him in this garden, right? And his job, his first job was to take care of the garden, right? Um, so I just want to elaborate on that because I believe that all of our first job, right, before we can go and do ministry, whether it's worship, whether it's uh, leadership, whether it's, uh, uh, you know, deacon, apostle, whatever, you know, there's a lot of jobs in the church, right? Your first ministry, your first job, right, is to take care of your garden, and, and your garden represents your heart. Right, so as I work in the yard, I think a lot about this analogy, right? Because I spend a lot of time in the yard. And Pastor referenced it re recently just about this is not an easy job, right? If any of you have spent time in the yard, it's like, you know, to try to, to, try to bear fruit and make a beautiful garden, whether it's flowers and trees and 
you know, the typical things that are in a garden, they take a lot of work. You know, the soil has to be right, soil has to be clean, soil has to have vitamins and minerals, right? The plants need food, you got to water, it needs sunlight, right? And somebody has to be watching to make sure the animals, right, don't come and tear up the, the plants that you're planting and all this kind of stuff. You know, to try to, to, try to have a, a, a nice garden is actually a lot of work, right? But the weeds, right, take zero effort, right? So if you, if you think about this as far as your heart is concerned, you know, the word of God is the seed, and the seed is being sown, right? As you read, as you listen to the word, right? And the Holy Spirit is the water, right? And he's coming to help you bear fruit, right, out of those seeds, right? But the weeds, you know, as we go out into the world, it's a lot of bad seeds being put in us, right? That's why you got to be careful, you know, all of this stuff on TV and YouTube and just people you talk to. There's a lot of wrong ideas and wrong messages and just the wrong spirit behind certain things that's planted certain things, right, into our hearts, right? And it sprouts up so quickly and it takes root so deep, right? It's like, you know, from, from one week to the next, you don't have to do anything. You don't have to plan anything. You don't have to protect it. You don't have to pay it any. All you have to do is do nothing and you will have a garden full of weeds, right? You'll have a heart full of sin, right? But if you want to have if you want to bear the fruit of the Spirit, right, it takes a lot of work. And before you can do anything for God, you have to figure out this balance, right? Everybody has, like, their own balance, right? Everybody's garden, is, you know, God is, we're not all bearing the same kind of fruit, right, depending on what you got to do, you know what I'm saying? But you have to figure that balance out, you know what I'm saying? You have to come to the place where you can manage uh, uh, the weeds, at least keep it under control, right, until you can get all of that stuff plucked up. And I honestly think that it's going to take a whole life, right, as we're getting cleansed and we're getting all of the world out of us and putting more of God in us and bearing more fruit for God. Amen? So I know it's, it's, uh, it's, it's difficult to to understand if you haven't worked in the garden. And I think that that's why God chose those people who had certain type of jobs and used those analogies because, you know, they understood what it's like to deal with sheep and they understood what it was like to, to catch fish. You know what I'm saying? So for us, when we read those analogies, it doesn't, it doesn't relate as well because we don't have the experience they had, right? So just, you know, my last couple of years working in the yard, I think about this analogy a lot and it makes a lot of sense to me, right? And I, and I, and as I meditate on the word, I'm, I'm constantly being just vigilant of my thought life. I'm constantly being vigilant of my emotions. I'm always watching myself because I'm aware how easily and how quickly sin will take root and will sprout. And you'll have a problem and you'll be thinking, where did this come from? How can this possibly be, right? We're always in church. We're always reading. We're always praying, right? And in the midst of all that, you still have a sin problem, right? I know um, at my mom's house, um, my mom actually don't even have real grass. My mom has astroturf, which is plastic grass, right? You pull up. And it just looks perfectly green. And if you go closer, it's not real. It's plastic, right? And she has weeds, real weeds, coming up through the plastic. How is that possible? I remember when she first got out, I thought, oh, man, it's going to last forever. And now you go now, and you can see the weeds. I'm like, that is amazing. It's not even a real grass, and the weeds are still coming up through. You see people that take out all the grass, and they just got rocks or some other thing. Weeds will find their way. You can take all that out and put concrete. Weeds will find their way through cracks in the concrete, right? This, this uh, uh, weeds and this analogy of sin, it's like this stuff is like amazingly uh, uh, 
determined, right, to find a way to come up, right? So you can't ever, like, let your guard down. You can't ever let your guard down. You know what I'm saying? We always have to be watching because we live in a fallen world. We're surrounded by all kinds of sin all the time from everybody and all these different sources and angles. Do you know what I'm saying? And that's only what you can see. Um, can we get uh, John 20, 14, and 15? So, and it says, and when she had thus said, she turned herself back and saw Jesus standing and knew not that it was Jesus. Jesus saith unto her, woman, why weepest thou? Whom seekest thou? She, supposing him to be the gardener, saith unto him, sir, if thou have borne him hence, tell me where thou hast laid him and I will take him away. I don't. I don't, uh, I didn't mean to give him a King James Version. Um, anyway, the point of it is, is this is like the first time Jesus is being seen after the resurrection and his, his first appearance is he's back into his gardening, right? Because we are God's garden. Amen? He's like immediately resurrected. He's immediately back on the job. Right? And I believe that, uh, I believe God likes this sort of analogy because he created the world this way. Do you know what I'm saying? But not only is it our first job, I believe it's, it's, it's God's job also. And I believe that when he put Adam in the garden, he's in the garden with Adam. Right? Because back, you know, before they fell, they were very close. You know what I'm saying? The Bible said, how can two walk together except they agree? Right? How are they going to be that close unless they have something in common? Amen? So I believe that um, God is in the gardening also. Right? And we all, we all know that as we are trying to bear fruit, either we're going to be a tree that has no fruit and get plucked up or... We're going to bear fruit, and we're going to get pruned, right? But at the end of the day, this is our first job. This is God's first job, and this is an important job before you go on to the higher-level jobs. And even as we do the higher-level jobs, this job always has to be done in the background. If you get into some higher-level job and you forget about your garden and you let all this stuff grow up in you, because you're doing something higher and more important, you're going to be in trouble. <laughs> you're going to be in trouble, like, very quickly, right? So this is just, like, a, a, a reminder, right, for everybody to always be, like, vigilant of yourself. And even, I think it's, it's something we have to learn, because I don't think it's natural, right, for us to um, uh, uh, be so self-aware, right? Because the world is not aware of the things we're aware of, right? The world is only living for flesh, right? We get saved and all of a sudden we're living spiritually. We have a soul and a spirit that we're trying to take care of along with our flesh, right? And there's, I believe it's a process, right, for us to learn to manage these other areas, to be healthy in all three areas. Amen? So, Take care of your gardens. Amen. Can I get Job 37, 11 through 13? So this is more kind of like the main uh, message, what I want to talk about. So, you know, Pastor was talking last week about us asking, seeking, and knocking, right, for the gift of the Holy Spirit, right? So, 
One of the patterns that I see in the Bible, and I don't think we've ever covered this, is the Bible gives a lot of different analogies for us to learn about ourselves in different ways, right? So this, in this analogy, and I'll go through several scriptures to kind of lay this out for you guys. You know, we're like the clouds. Amen? So basically, this scripture says that he loads the clouds with moisture and they flash with his lightning. The clouds churn about at his direction. It says they do whatever he commands throughout the earth. He makes these things happen uh, either to punish people or to show his unfailing love. Right? So this says that the clouds turn about at his direction, right? So these clouds are not just floating. These clouds are, are go, they go wherever God wants them to go, right? Um, they go wherever God wants them to go. These clouds are full of moisture, right? Which can represent the Holy Spirit, amen? It says they do whatever he commands throughout the earth, very obedient, and it says that he makes things happen. He makes these things happen either to punish or to show unfailing love. So just imagine, right? You have this person full of the Holy Spirit that God is directing, right? Wherever God wants this person to go, they go. And it says that either to punish, so this person has authority to discipline, right? Or to bless, right? So if you look at people that God raises up and have authority, right? They're full of the Holy Spirit. These people, you know, God might have them going any which way in the earth, right? And when these people show up with the authority of God, right, they could be showing up to discipline, right, or to bless, pronounce blessing. Um, but in this analogy, um, they can be like the clouds. Amen? Uh, Proverbs 25, 14. And this is that a person who promises a gift but doesn't give it is like clouds and wind that brings no rain. So Pastor had a, 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 a scripture on the band a few weeks ago that's similar to this, and I'm going to pull it up. And it talks about um, clouds that don't actually have rain. And it compares these to like false prophets, right? And that's it's like a, a dangerous, a dangerous place to be. So this analogy is like all throughout the all throughout the Bible, right? About God's servants, right? And I'm just not talking about anybody because the whole point of a cloud is that this cloud is carrying this moisture that represents the Holy Spirit. So this person is is like the apostles, right? This person is like a powerful person. Amen? And then you have people who claim that they have these gifts and claim that they have the spirit, right? And they're going around deceiving people. Can I get Jude uh, 1 and 12? It says that these people are blemishes at your love feast, eating with you without the slightest qualm. Shepherds who feed only themselves, they are clouds without rain, Blown along by the wind, autumn trees without the fruit, and uprooted, twice dead. Right? So again, this, this, is, this is talking about people of authority, right? This is talking about people who are claiming that they have authority, claiming that they have the spirit, claiming that they have power, claiming that they have revelation, right? But they don't. And they're going around deceiving. And they're going around trying to teach. And they're going around trying to preach. And they're going around trying to prophesy. And you know what the Lord said? If the blind follow the blind, they both fall into a ditch, basically, right? So not only are they themselves, they don't know where they're going, but they got people following them, and everybody following them doesn't know where they're going because they don't know where they're going. Amen? And it says that these people are twice dead. I mean, you think one's dead is dead enough. I don't know what twice dead actually Maybe that's referencing like the second death, right? But that's bad, right? You're twice dead. And it says that 
you have to be careful of these people, right? Because it says these people are eating with you without the slightest qualm, right? These people come along into your group and fellowship like it's just all good, right? And you, and you have to be very careful, right? And this is where you need, like, discernment. And this is where you have to be careful, right? Because you get to listen to these people, all of a sudden, your fruit is going to be bad. Your fruit is going to be bad, right? And they're not going to be able to help you. Amen? Um, can I get First Kings 18, 44? And it says... This scripture is uh, it's from the time of Elijah, and this is when Elijah goes to uh, the top of the mountain, and he's praying for rain because it's been a drought, right? And it says, and it, this is when he's sending his servant. He's praying, and he's sending his servant to see, do you see anything, right? And it says that the seventh time the servant reported, a cloud as small as a man's hand is rising from the sea. So Elijah said, Go and tell Ahab, hitch up your uh, chariot and go down before the rain stops you. And Elijah is, is praying for rain, right? And rain represents the spirit, right? And he says he sees a cloud about the size of a man's hand, right? So spiritually, right, when you have these anointed servants of God, when they come and they pray over you, right? When pastor come, he just lifts his hands, right? When Pastor Kim come, they just raise their hand, right? And the Holy Spirit is being poured out. Amen? His gifts being poured out. His prophecy is rhema. You, you see what I'm saying? So, you know, Elijah is one of the uh, more famous uh, uh, prophets in the Bible. And, and I, just, I just think that you know, when he's saying that he sees a cloud about the size of a man's hand, if he's Elijah praying and there's, and there's somebody coming, because when you see this, we all think of something in the sky, right? We're thinking naturally, right? But I'm saying spiritually, right? In our day and age, right? God can send a person, right? When you're praying, you know, we may be praying for some kind of supernatural phenomenon, right? I know when sometimes you're praying and you want God to speak to you directly. You, want, you don't want to hear a voice. You want to hear something. You want something supernatural to happen, but God may send a person. You know what I'm saying? When, when I know for me, I was, when I first, uh, uh, before I had tongues, I was just praying and praying and praying, and God made, uh, through the course of events, that I had to get, like, hands laid on me, right? He had to send a person that had that gift, right, that could impart that gift. But, I, you know, I didn't know this back then. I was just at home praying, right? It wasn't like here how people come first time and they just get tongues. I prayed for, like, several months. I was so desiring tongues, man. I was like, it was all I prayed about for, like, several months, right? God, give me tongues. And then when I got hands laid on me, I remember I went also a period of time, maybe a month or longer, that I could hear the tongue going. And it was like my lips couldn't catch up to it. I don't even know how to explain that, but I had to give. I could clearly hear it every time I pray. You know, you close your eyes and you're praying, and I can hear the tongue going inside of me, but it's like I couldn't speak it out, and it took me a period of time to be able to speak out the tongue. But I just, I just kept working on it, and one day I, was, I used to have to pray so hard, right, just to, just to, just to get the tongues out, you know? And, but back then I was praying for some supernatural, right? I thought it was just going to come out, maybe a dub would descend, I don't know, <laughs> but it didn't, it didn't come like that, right, um, it was, it was so interesting how that happened, um, one of the things that happened when I was praying for tongues, I remember I went to a, I went to like some convention in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, right, the other side of the country, and, and, and there was this woman, um, that was ministering, and it's a room, it's like a thousand people in this room, and I'm sitting in the front seat, and she's just walking around the room, just ministering, she's just talking, 
And the woman stops in front of me and hits me on the head. And she was like, baptized with the Holy Spirit, speaking in tongues, right? I didn't even hear what she said because she hit me on the head. I just, you know what I'm saying? I remember I, I, I turned to my sister and said, what? And she said, oh, you know what I'm saying? I didn't get the tongue, but that was just that God confirmed that he heard my prayer. And baby, it just let me know that it was coming. You know what I'm saying? But this is all through like servants of God. It wasn't like through supernatural voices like, uh, like how I want it, right? This was through clouds, basically. You, you, you see what I'm saying? Um, can I get Psalms 78, 14? And we're familiar with this. And this is um, Moses and, and, and them in the wilderness. And it says, in the daytime, he led them by a cloud and all night by a pillar of fire. Normally, when I read this, me personally, I always focus on the pillar of fire. Do you know what I'm saying? But just recently, I've been thinking the cloud was there. If, if I don't know why, but I always thought the cloud was like weaker until recently God's given me this revelation, right? I'm thinking, yeah, nighttime pillar of fire, right? I just get it for nighttime pray, right? Nighttime pillar of fire, right? The, the, the cloud, I always thought that was weak, right? It's like, why? You know. But now I realize, right? This cloud represents um, somebody with a lot of authority that's full of the spirit of God, right? So praise God for the clouds, amen? Can I get Mark 14, 62? I'm just showing you, it's a lot about the clouds. I don't even have all the scriptures, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And Jesus said, I am, and you will see the Son of Man seated in the place of power at God's right hand and coming in the clouds of heaven. Right? So when you see this, we all think at the end of the world, right? Jesus is going to be floating on the cloud. He's going to come down. Don't tell me I'm the only one thought that. Right? Jesus like surfing on the cloud like, woo! Right? But also, spiritually, right, God has clouds in the earth right now, and you will see Jesus coming through then. Amen? And, and that's how most people are going to see God, right? I don't know, you know, who, who's going to be here at the end time and, and see this whole event where Jesus descends back, right? I believe that's true. But you remember the word is true for all time. Right, so this scripture has been being fulfilled over and over, right? As Jesus sends his servants throughout the earth. And he's been sending his servants throughout the earth, you know, since the world's been here, basically. Amen? So, praise God. So, basically, um, God is just, as pastor is asking us to ask, seek, and knock, right? We have to become clouds. When people see you, they should see a cloud about the size of a man's hand. Amen? I mean, it's, 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 it's great when revival time comes, but at some point, when we get trained up, we need to bring the revival. Amen? We need to be the cloud that God directs any place in the earth. Amen? We need to have the faith to go where God wants us to go, do what God wants us to do, right? Have the authority to bless and to curse, right? Raise up or bring down. Amen? I mean, we've been training for 10 years, right? It's got to be for something. Amen? Amen? So, you know, if you look at, like, the nature of a cloud, right? Cloud is very gentle, right? Ain't nobody ever got into a fight with a cloud. Amen. Cloud is, is just floating, right? 
It's just gently doing its business. It's just carrying the Spirit. This is a vessel for the Holy Spirit, right? It is no, it is no thorns or thistles, no rough edges on a cloud. The cloud ships, shifts its shape into whatever the Spirit needs it to be, right? So this person can be whatever God needs it to be at that appropriate time, right? It's a scripture where Paul says that, you know, to a Jew, he's a Jew. To a Roman, he's a Roman, right? So, you know, to a ghetto person, you can be ghetto. You go to the hills, you can be uppity. You know, whatever. You know what I'm saying? At the, at the end of the day, you know, uh, uh, cloud has no, like, solid form or shape or it's just a vessel, right? A very gentle, floating vessel, right? Clouds uh, uh, naturally, there's different levels of clouds, right? You have low-hanging clouds. You have clouds that are, are higher up in like stratosphere and different, you know what I'm saying? Based on how much moisture, right? Based, the cloud changes based on how much water is in the cloud. You see a darker cloud, you know, okay, this cloud is about to, it's about to rain, right? We want to be those clouds that's full of the spirit where people see you and they like, oh, it's about to go down, right? It's certain, it's certain people, right? You see these people, right? You know, oh, oh it's God is, God is in the building. You know what I'm saying? We want to be those people, right? At your school, at your job, in your home, right? Um, uh, what was it? In Benny Hinn's book, he talked about a time in his life where he would just spend all day in his room, just worshiping God all day, right? In his book, Good Morning, Holy Spirit. And he says one day he opened the door, or, or his mom opened his door, and she got thrown back you know, by the Holy Spirit. It was just so much presence of God in the room. You know what I'm saying? That she was just, because I think back then his family was like harassing him and they were giving him a hard time, right? And he's just going after God. You know, we want to be those people where like Pastor said, God protects his investment, right? God's been investing in, in us for years and training and getting us prepared Right. And we don't know what's going to happen in the world. You know what I'm saying? But we want to be those people to where we're so focused on God's economy. It doesn't even matter. It doesn't even matter. Right. We know God's going to take care of us. And as long as we are doing our part for God, we good. You know what I'm saying? We 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 good. So I think. um as, as some of us have even made vows, right, that we're going to be more serious about seeking after the Holy Spirit. I mean, if you look at, if you look at the Bible, right, you got Old Testament, you got New Testament. The Old Testament is two-thirds of the Bible, right? And the whole Old Testament is pretty much about the law and obedience to the law, right? So obedience, right, is two-thirds, right? There's no revelation. I, I, I was thinking recently about if you would have went to an Old Testament church, they're not bringing revelation. They're just reading the Bible. They're just, you go to a church and they're just directly reading verbatim what the Bible says. You know, you do that nowadays, people go to sleep. I was even saying, oh man, I got to stop reading so much Bible. People go to sleep. And they're reading, and there's times in the Bible where they're hours, and they're just reading verbatim. There's a place in there where at, uh, at the end of Moses' life, he gathers everybody and he reads the whole covenant. I remember thinking, how did they stay awake? I think they didn't have chairs. I think they were standing up. You know what I'm saying? So, you got the Old Testament, two-thirds, obedience. And you got the New Testament, and you got two main things we have to get we have to get what Jesus did for us on the cross through faith, right? There's, there's, there's a place 
where we have to, uh, our belief in him has to be to the level where we can receive what he did on the cross, right? And then after that, we have to get the Holy Spirit so that we can walk out the resurrection life, right? Like, them is like huge points in our, in our walk with God that we have to get, right? And when you get, when you get uh, uh, full of the Spirit, when you get to this level where you're, at, you're like a cloud and God can sing you anywhere and you have the authority. And, you know, this, these people, their authority is not necessarily based on uh, uh, some system that they're a part of, right? Like, there's a level of, of authority that you can have authority independent from, from anything. God can sing you someplace in the middle of nowhere, right? A lot of these prophets in the Bible... They weren't a part of, you know, big ministries. They weren't a part of organizations. It wasn't like, but the Holy Spirit in them gave them the authority that when they spoke something, um, you can't come against that. You know what I'm saying? It's like when they speak something, they got the authority that God is behind it and that's enough. You know what I'm saying? They may, like, look, they may look crazy, right? John the Baptist. Uh, I believe he had on a leather belt and some kind of crazy cold or something like that, eating honey and locusts or whatever, right? But when he talks, uh, you better listen. Amen? So that's just food for thought. You know, we want, we want to get to this level one day. Um, can I get... Genesis 2, 7. And it says, And then the Lord God formed the man from the dust of the ground. He breathed the breath of life into the man's nostrils, and the man became a living person. Um, and I know I've been in Genesis. And I honestly believe that me and my wife... Um, it's like, it feels like, you know, we're really in a new season. It feels like God is breathing new life into our business. He's breathing new life into just our life, you know, with just Joel and just everything, right? We're, we're, it feels like we're starting over into something entirely new. And we've been discussing this at home. Um, so in this verse, uh, what I want to speak on is how God formed Adam, and then he breathed the breath of life into his nostrils, and he became a living person, right? And so you guys know that after God formed him and breathed the breath of life into him, he placed him in the garden, like we just said. Okay, thank you. And then um, soon after that, him and Eve are have to make a choice between the two trees, right? And what I was thinking about is if God breathed the breath of life into him and that, that breath of life was the spirit, right? He had the spirit, right? It's like, why, how could he stand in front of these trees and still choose wrong? Right? Because those born of God overcome. Right? How could he choose wrong if God breathed the breath of life in him, right? And so what I believe is that when God breathed his breath into him, because before this, he, he's dead, right? God has to give him a level of life to where it's fair for him to be able to choose. Does that make sense? God has to, as he becomes a living soul, he has an active conscience, right? He, on his own, can make a certain level of decision for God to fairly hold him to that decision. Do, do you see what I'm saying? 
And I believe without that breath, he couldn't have done that, right? So if you look at... Can we go to John 20, 21 and 23? And this is uh, Jesus speaking. And this is, at the, this is before Jesus ascends up. And he says, again, he said, peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I am sending you. Then he breathed on them and said, receive the Holy Spirit, right? If you forgive anyone's sins, they are forgiven. If you do not forgive them, they are not forgiven, right? So again, just like Father God breathed on Adam, Jesus breathes on the disciples, right? And said, receive the Holy Spirit. So as he's breathing on them and they receive the Holy Spirit, why is it that they still have to go to Pentecost to receive the Holy Spirit if he's already breathed on them, right? And it's because, just like Adam, I believe that when Jesus breathed on them, that level that they received was enough for them to choose, right? God has to make it fair for you to choose. If you were to go up to anybody on the street that's completely spiritually dead and offered them eternal choices, it's not really fair for them. They're completely dead. They have no idea what you're talking about. They're not alive spiritually. They have no discernment. They have no revelation. They have no, they're not in a position to make that choice. You feel what I'm saying? If I were to go ask Joel, you know, some eternal question, he has no idea. It's not fair for him. Do you feel what I'm saying? Joel has to be trained. He has to be raised. He has to learn about spiritual things. He has to come to a certain place. And I believe uh, in the fire books, it says that when kids get, you know, I think we're around 13 or something, that they can start going to hell at a certain point. There's a certain point where God is going to say, you are alive enough, right, to make a certain choice. You You see what I'm saying? And pastor always says, like, the Holy Spirit comes upon you, but he wants to be in you, right? And those are two different levels, right? So I believe when God is breathing on them, the Holy Spirit is with them at that point, and the Holy Spirit has to be with them to help them, give them the ability to choose. He's still not going to force them, right? He's still not going to force them. You have the ability to choose what you want to choose, and Adam and Eve chose wrong. So that proves that God is not hindering you from choosing, but you still have to choose. Amen? So, and why I'm saying that is because if you compare that to us, right, we've been here, we've been getting trained, we've been getting imparted, right? We've been imparted for like years, right? Anytime you see pastor imparting, right, he's imparting fire, and he's speaking, right? So you got the word working and the spirit working at the same time. You got the logos and the rhema, right? Pastor Kim comes, he's imparting fire, and he's prophesying at the same time, right? So you got logos and rhema working. And God has been filling us up, right? Holy Spirit's with us, giving us the word so we can choose, right? It's not that we have everything because in order to have more of God, you have to choose, right? But after years of us being imparted, right, and after years of us being fed, right, we're all at the level where we can choose. I think, I think a lot of times people want the choice to be made for them or you want it to, you know, the choice is not easy to make. You know what I'm saying? You know, I believe a few weeks ago when APC testified, right, you know, you could see how difficult it is sometimes to choose, but he still had the choice to choose, and he chose, right? And God helped him. Amen? That, that is kind of like the meat of, of, 
of, of what God is trying to bring us to after, after all of this training. You know what I'm saying? It's always going to be a choice. There's always going to be, uh, God is always going to honor our free will. You know what I'm saying? It doesn't matter how much prophesying. It doesn't matter how much power and fire and how much of this or that, right? It's still, you're going to come to a place and those two trees are going to be there. And we have to choose life, right? And I believe that when the apostles went into that room and prayed and the Holy Spirit came, they chose life, right? Before that, they were completely afraid. And had they not gone through that process, they would have stayed afraid. And they would have chose death. Amen? So, again, I don't think it was easy for them you know, they had to go into their room. They had to make a determined decision that, okay, we're going to stay here. We're going to pray until the gift that God promised us is coming. Amen? But they had the ability to do it. Right? Jesus breathed on them and clearly gave them the ability to do it. And I believe that God has been imparting to us the ability to choose. We all have the ability to choose. It may not seem natural. It may not be easy, right? But we have the ability to choose, right? And with that choice, it's nothing that we can't do. Once you choose, once you make that choice and the power of God is behind you, we can choose. We can become the clouds. You feel what I'm saying? We can become these people that represent God properly so that the kingdom of God can be expanded and God's business can move forward. Amen? It's like... You know, there's a lot of uh, uh, wisdom that we've been given um, through the years, uh, through this ministry, uh, um, both directly and indirectly. Um, you know, we got the book, uh, Love and Respect. And on the service level, it's like, man, we have all of the ingredients. You know what I'm saying? But even within that, we st- you still need to, like, balance Right? Anybody who's married knows that you have those base ingredients. Oh, I know, you know, I need to love, love my wife and she needs to respect me, but you still need balance, right? There's still within that uh, uh, choices that have to be made and there's wisdom that has to be applied. Amen. But we have the ability. You know what I'm saying? We have all the tools. Right? I, I hope you are listening when APC testified. I hope you're listening when Pastor is saying uh, uh, that you need to be declaring the word over yourself, right? You need to be uh, uh, speaking these declarations over yourself, right? I hope you're listening when Pastor Eugen testifies about her experience when she dealt with her offense, right? I hope you're listening when I'm talking to you about meditating, right? Um, these are all, you should have a toolbox at this point of strategies that you can use when you get into your situation to help you overcome. I mean, you, you can just go down the list, just try what works for you, right? If not, try everything, right? But there should be no, you know, I'm sure there's more things that God's going to show us, but at this point, you know, we have, we have a lot, right? We have a lot of revelation. We have a lot of fire, we have a lot of wisdom. We have, you know, we have, I don't know, man. We have everything. I mean, what do we not, what do we not have? Do you know what I'm saying? The only part is that we still have to choose. Right? I mean, you see, everybody goes through ups and downs. We all, we all go through our tests. We all go through our difficulties. That part is normal, and that's, that's probably never going to go away, right? But as we choose, God is there, man. I don't testify 
as much as I should about how much God helps me and my wife. But man, I can't. There's so many times that me and my wife get to the end of our money and God always comes through. There's all the phone always rings. Somebody comes through with something, right? And it's like God is so faithful to us under this covering. It's just like it's, it's ridiculous. You know what I'm saying? At whatever level, at whatever we're working on, you know, everybody in their different ministries and callings. God is really uh, uh, helping us all so much that, you know, we should all be, like, just so grateful. Amen? So, end of the day, you know, we want to, we want to, if God is investing so much in us, we really want to show God that we're grateful by giving him a return on his investment, whether it's 30-fold, 60-fold, 100-fold, right? For his glory. Amen? I mean, at some point, it has to, it has to touch your heart um, with how generous God has been with us. Amen? Both spiritually, physically, you know, whether he's putting together your family, whether he's helped your health, whether he's helped your business, whether he's helped your job, whether he's helped your spiritual condition, whether he's helped your mental condition, whether he's helped your, right, whether he's given you gifts and talents. I mean, this is it's a very long list of things God has done for our, our group. Amen. So, uh, you know, at the end of the day, um, I just want to encourage you, like, always... Remember that you have to be careful. You have to watch your garden. Always remember who you are in Christ and who God wants us to be. God wants us to be the clouds, right? In Noah's day, um, God made a covenant with Noah, and he says he put his bow in the clouds, right? And that this bow was a sign of his covenant, right? And I talked the other week about how uh, the colors of the rainbow could represent like the fruit of the spirit, right? When you become that cloud and you have the Holy Spirit, producing the fruit should be like, it's natural, right? When you have the love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, gentleness, meekness, right? And, and he says that that bow is a sign of his covenant and people are going to see that, right? And they're going to see the Son of Man coming in the clouds. Amen? And that's a powerful thought. Amen? If you, uh, if you agree with what I'm saying, say amen. amen. I praise God. I think I'm going to end it there.